Hi, I'm Miss Ackner, and I'm your child's first grade teacher, and I'm making this video just to go over some tips and tricks about virtual learning and some things I were expecting for virtual learning so that you don't feel blindsided on Monday when we get started. So let me, just give me a second, I gotta present something to you. My entire screen. Okay, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about the parent handbook, like I said. Um, so the first thing, what is my kid's schedule like? So I gave you in the learning kits a, a sample of your student's schedule. Some students are group A and some students are group B. Um, and those schedules tell you when I want to meet with your child, at what time, for how long. Now, we may end a session a little bit early, if we, especially the first two weeks of school, because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to teach the kids tech skills those weeks. I'm not worried. I'm not worried so much about academics. But after that, I'll be we'll be going in deep. Um, so. And it tells you suggested times of like when to give the kids a break, when to let them go outside and eat lunch and play for a little while. When to do iReady, which is an online program, right? Just kind of helps you. How can I create a child-friendly learning space? So there's a few ways to do this, and it's going to be different from every family because you are, all are in different situations. So um, have the kids log in for class three to five minutes before start time. To log in for class, all you ha they have to do is log into their computer and then. I, I I eventually will connect to their, com I my computer will connect to their computers when I am logged in. Um, make sure students have a quiet and calm space. I, I provided you guys with some headphones. Have the kids wear those headphones during our meetings. It will make life a lot easier for if you have other children that are also taking classes at the same time, if you're working. What not, what not. Um, and then have the students have some ownership in using the technology. Don't do it all for them because we want to build that independence so that you're not always having to put so much effort to log them in, get them ready for everything. And then have the students have their learning kits right next to their Chromebooks because I'll be asking them to go inside a workbook page or to do something else of that nature. Um, tips for Chromebook care. Okay, because we're talking about young children and computers. So keep food and drinks away from the Chromebooks. If they were in class with me, I wouldn't allow them to have food or drinks by the Chromebooks. Um, don't put books, elbows, or anything heavy on the Chromebooks because it might crack the screen. Um, um, a suggestion, if the kids start getting headaches, is to buy blue blocker glasses. Now, they don't have a prescription in them, but they block the blue light which tends to give kids headaches. So this happens a lot for kids who get a lot of screen time. Like say they are working on, the, we're working on our classes and they're on video chats with their with teachers for like two to three hours a day. And then they wanna go play their video game. So they're playing video game on the TV and then they wanna play with their iPad for a little bit. And then you had to go somewhere and the kids are acting rowdy. And so you gave your cell phone so they could watch a video while you're in the car. That blue light, too much exposure to that blue light can give kids headaches. Doesn't always, but can. So this is just a solution to that. And then um, don't let the students walk around with holding the Chromebook. We're talking about five, six, and seven-year-olds. I wouldn't let them carry it around in the classroom. I would move it for them. But it's just not a great solution because it just isn't. Um, so what programs will we use? So these are the programs that the major that we'll use majority of the time. Clever, which the clever pops up as soon as kids log on. Google Classroom, that's where you'll access all your assignments. Um, Class Dojo, that's where I'll put a lot of my class announcements. We'll go on Class Dojo. iReady, iReady is a program they do independently for um, ELA and. Raz Kids, which is a reading program. So when on the student schedule it says independent reading, that means get on Raz Kids. If you don't have books at home, get on Raz Kids. Or if you do have books at home and you've just read them 50 million times, get on Raz Kids. Um, and then there's Dreambox, which is for math. 
which is a program I don't think the kids have used before. Um, but very simple. Um, iReady and Dreambox are very much video game-esque programs that work on ELA and math skills. Um, so that's and then occasionally I'll use another website um, just for something fun, but I'll usually explain exactly how to use it. And, it's, and these are the, just our main programs. Do's and don'ts, the learning kit. So I put together these learning kits. I spent so much time and energy putting them together. Um, and in your learning kits, you'll have several things. So there is a little gift for me, and I, um, I had custom masks made to, to fit your child. Um, and I gave them a pencil and eraser. That's just like a gift, something fun for the kids to have. You can just like hand those over to the gifts, take them out of the kits when you get them home. Um, there's also a bag with a with a like a black piece of cardboard and beads and please don't touch it. It's for a math lesson that's coming up and I just want you to leave it in the kit. Don't mess with it. You will also get um, a composition book for writing, a line, a, a notebook of lined paper. You'll get uh, three math workbooks. One is for, one is the home connection book. One is the number corner workbook. And one is the bridges workbook. We will be using all of those materials and you got a handwriting workbook, um, which I'll assign assignments out of. Um, keep all of that stuff in the kit. There's also some glue and pencils and some crayons and some scissors. I don't think I'm missing. I think that's everything. Um, you'll also find information for Google Classroom, how to get into your, like the code for the, my Google Classroom, how to get connected with Jojo, um, there are clever cards to log into the computers. I've tried to think of everything that you could possibly need. I tried my best. Um, you don't need to buy any school supplies unless you want something extra. Like you will obviously, the, there's, only, there's only like one or two pencils in there. Obviously, maybe go out, buy a box of pencils, maybe buy a pencil sharpener, like an electric one, just to make your life easier. Buy a little bit of like some glue sticks to make your life just to just kind of have a couple extra things around. But I tried to think of everything you would need when I put these kits together. Um, don't allow them to play with their kits. Don't let them draw in the notebooks because I'm going to be asking them to use them for schoolwork. And I won't be able, I don't have more funds to replace the stuff. I only have what I kind of gave you. Um, and then keep them in a safe place. Maybe these kids, when they're, you guys aren't working on schoolwork, maybe they're put up somewhere high so they can't touch them. Um, so learning from home. So it's important that, um, your kid, before school starts, make sure they have breakfast or they eat lunch. Make sure they're dressed for the day. Don't let them show up on my video in their pajamas. <laughs> Just like when they come to school in a uniform, I would expect them to be dressed when they show up for a meeting that we are having for class time. Now, they don't need to wear their uniform, but, you know, T-shirt, shorts, pants, something, cute dress on, whatever. Um, just not pajamas. <laughs> um, so for class, they should be at a at a, like a table with a hard surface, um, quiet if possible. Um, have a light on so that I'll be able to see their face through the camera. Um, if you have questions, when I am on a live session and, or when I have office hours, those are the times that we can ask those questions. Um, so, so this is going to be, this is a really new thing, right? Virtual learning. So last year we were kind of in survival mode. Like we did what we call remote learning, but it wasn't good. And we knew it wasn't good, but we were just trying our best. And we all thought it was going to be for two weeks, which turned into a month, which turned into the rest of the school year. So, and now we're looking at virtual learning and virtual learning is a step up from that. It's like a full breath of like, I'm educating your child while you are at home. And it's a little bit different. Um, we understand that kids aren't quite ready to sit in in front of the computer a whole ton in the beginning. They might be squirmy. They might get bored with it. I, I totally understand if you have problems like that, please get a hold of me so I can help best I can. Attendance is based on your child's presence during live sessions. So if you, if they do not show up for my live 
live sessions, they are absent. After so many absences, we have the same absence policy we have always had. So it's really important that they're on these live sessions as every day. So that's their learning time. Um, if your child doesn't want to participate in lessons, just give them a little break for five, 10 minutes and then try, try again. There's no reason to hard fight with them. It's just give them a break. Maybe they're a little overwhelmed. There's a little too much at the moment and then try again. Um, what should I focus on my child? So the best thing is, you know, first two weeks, like get them logged in, try to keep them organized, um, try to put them on a schedule. So they know that like every day we eat breakfast, we get, we have school. Or if you're an afternoon kid, we have lunch, we do school. When, when we're done with school, we're done. Right. Um, try to get them on a routine for that. So in the first two weeks, we're going to be focusing more on learning how to use the technology and online routines and a little less on math and ELA and science and social studies and all of the things, right? At the beginning, we're doing a little, and if we were in school, I would do the same thing, except I'd be teaching them other things about being in, the, in school and in the classroom. So this is, this is, it doesn't really differ from what we would normally do during the school year. The first couple of weeks of school, I spend a little less time on teaching them how to, you know, read, do math, all of that. And a little more time on how do, how do we go to school? How do we be a good student? How do I be a good friend? That's what we focus our first couple of weeks of school on normally. So it's not very different. So how can I develop my child's independence? So for the first two weeks of school, establishing like um, how to log into Clever, how to use all the apps in Clever, how to get on a session with me, um, how to use iReady. So when your kid is able to log on to their Chromebook, their independence will grow and you will have to do less and they can do more. Now, your kids did log in to these Chromebooks by themselves in kindergarten. I know this. I've talked to the kindergarten teachers about this. I put your, the Clever badge in there so you don't have to really worry about typing in that 97s dot just scan the badge and it will log them in automatically um hope that's how can i make it fun so using some positive reinforcement encouraging them will be like the best thing um giving them a little bit of a break every so often to get up and moving um and when you're stressed the kids can can feel that stress. So if you start getting frustrated with technology and what is going on and you just can't figure out how to make it work, get a hold of me, talk to me, I will help you. Um, that's all I got. The only other thing I wanna talk about is bef um, during my live sessions, um, before they get started, can you just make sure the kids get something to drink, make sure they're fed, make sure they go to the bathroom because I only have a very short amount of time um, and I would prefer if they didn't weren't getting up and running around while, while I'm because they need to go to the bathroom and they're thirsty and they're this, right? I know how that works. So just try to make sure they're fed, they've had something to drink, and they went to the bathroom before we get started every day. And I will see everybody on Monday.